Hi Pilgrims, it's Nadine from Nadine Walks. Today we have a video that's the second part in the series of the communal conversation I had with Jeremiah from Camino Guide and Kate from Wonderlusting Lawyer. So the three of us had sat down and had a long conversation about all things Camino, and we split up that conversation into a series of videos. And if you haven't already, please go and check out the first video we posted. That's over on Jeremiah's channel, Camino Guide. It's where we share how we discovered the Camino, what brought us there, a little bit of our Camino history. And today in this video, we're continuing the conversation a bit and talking about how we find time for the Camino. So the whole conversation was really great, and we hope you really enjoy the series as much as we did putting it together. You can find future videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Saturday schedule. So Monday, Jeremiah is posting at Camino Guide. On Wednesdays, you can find the videos here at Nadine Walks. And on Saturdays, you can find them on Kate's channel, Wander Wanderlusting Lawyer. So please stay tuned for more. And in the meantime, enjoy today's video. Some of that was, you know, a, um, a choice that I made to have a job that allowed to have some of that freedom and extra time. But um, I know, you know, I think when I was listing off all my Caminos, it's that's just not realistic <laughs> for most people to be able to go back year after year. Wow, you guys, I'm so <laughs> impressed by how much you've walked. That's incredible. But, but you've walked like three different, four, three or four Caminos yourself, Kate, right? No, only two, only two okay, so two. far. Okay. Yeah. Okay, only two. I, thought... I did do the full Frances and then yeah, yeah the Aragones. Aragones yeah. Um, I've many more in the future, but you know, it's trying to find that period of time to go. And then, and I'm sure we'll talk about this later, but the readjustment period coming back, yeah, especially dropping back into a job like, yeah. like I have where yeah. work doesn't wait for you and it's yeah. tough to go to, mm -hmm. for that transition back. So, but plenty of uh, plans for the future. Yeah. Well, I guess that's one of the advantages. I mean, maybe folks don't know, what we do, but that's one of the advantages that Nadine and I have on being able to do Camino is the summers, both of us working in education, the yeah. summers are a lot more free. Um, so not that I don't work in the summer, I assume you do too, Nadine, but I have a lot more flexibility and be able to get blocks of time off. Sure, yeah, I definitely, definitely am feeling very lucky and blessed to have that time in the summer. Um, I know for me, some of that was, you know, um, a choice that I made to have a job that allowed to have some of that freedom and extra time. But um, I know, you know, I think when I was listing off all my Caminos, it's that's just not realistic <laughs> for most people to be able to go back year after year, especially doing some of those full routes. So I think, you know, I'm really mindful that, that right now I'm in this period of my life where I do have that time. I um, don't have too much here at home that I need to kind of stick around for and attend to. And so that it's made it really possible to be able to travel and do the Camino. Um, it has meant though, that I've only ever really walked in the summertime. And I think that, you know, certainly I think through our videos and maybe for our conversation today, it'll be, you know, it, it's interesting to hear about, you know, the different times of the year when you walk and some of the advantages, disadvantages. I know that the uh, Via de la Plata is on my list, but that's one starting so south in Spain that I, <laughs> you don't want to walk in in the summer. It's far too hot to walk in the yeah. summer. So, so we'll see if I ever, if I can ever find a chunk of time the spring or fall, take a little break from my job, maybe <laughs> I'll be walking that one. But other than yeah, that, I think I'm kind of limited to the summer. This question I feel like comes up a lot in the Facebook groups we're a part of is people talking about how to get the time off, how other people have handled it with their jobs mm -hmm. that don't have kind of like a, a built-in vacation period. And I did, mm -hmm. when I was walking the Francais in the summer, I did meet several teachers. Um, it's a job that lends itself well to getting that mm -hmm. nice um, block of time where you don't have to explain to anybody. But, you know, it's. I think a lot of it is just talking with your employer. There may be an opportunity mm -hmm. to have uh, some personal time off. That's what I did this past summer. I just, I took a personal leave. Um, so, and I know for a lot of people, they're at the point where this is so, the Camino calling is so loud and strong that if an employer is not supportive, there's just a lot of trust that this is what's right for me right now. And this is the path I'm meant to be on and what happens next is meant to happen. And so I've seen a lot of people take that leap of faith of like, just quit my job. <laughs> I'm off in a few <laughs> weeks and then we'll figure it out. And I think, 
you know, especially for something like the Camino Francais, the number of people you're meeting and you're sharing your story with, I'd be surprised if like, there aren't lots of people that end up making connections that helps right. them like find a new job, or they realize they want to mm -hmm. be in Spain and they want to volunteer or work on the route. And so, you know, I think it is interesting. Um, it is an interesting conversation. And I think, I think more employers more and more are becoming aware of, you know, need for people to escape the corporate rat race and just do it in a different way. Right. And so mm -hmm. approaching from a perspective with like flexibility, I think has worked well for people. Um, otherwise, yeah, just quit your job. <laughs> yeah. Well, and honestly, I, one of the things that I've said to people over and over again too, is like, and, and this was clear when we were talking just on our, like the first call that we had together, part of it's just cause you've just snagged time when you can. You know, like if there's a block of time, you don't wait until you can make an 800 kilometer walk. You have nine days. What can I do in nine days? What can I do in seven days? Or, you know, a lot of folks have these really idealistic things about, you know, I'm going to be completely disconnected from my phone and from home and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, one time I remember I was walking and to be able to walk the section that I was going to walk, I was going to have to teach the first week of a, of a online class from Spain. And I was just like, whatever. I mean, like, I'll just grab two hours of each day and I'll go do the thing and it'll be fine. You know? And I, and I did, mm -hmm. and it was, it was a great Camino. I just knew that beforehand that it was going to be, you know, I was going to have to do this thing every day. So, um, I thought that was, I think that there's a good lesson and just make what you can make what you part of the pilgrimage you can and don't have any, these kind of expectations that it has to be a certain way to make it happen. Sure. I know I met, I've met a lot of people who do the Camino in like section of chunks mm -hmm. of time, right? So they'll go out if it's the Camino Frances, they have a week, maybe mm -hmm. a week to 10 days. They'll do the first part, you know, Saint Jean de Burgos, and then they'll pick up again in Burgos and then walk to Leon and then continue on. I know, the roots in France too, it, that's very typical for the French pilgrims. They really go and, I mean, some will do the whole route at once, but when I was on the Chemin du Puy, a, so many pilgrims had a week at a time. And they're like, oh yeah, well this year I'm doing this week of the, of the Chemin, next year I'm gonna do the next week. So I do think that, you know, it, sure, if you can get a, a month, five weeks, six weeks off, it's wonderful, <laughs> it's great. But I think the reality is, yeah, Jeremiah, like you just said, it's, you, you kind of, do what you can and take advantage and it's an incredible experience right if you've got five days if you've got a week if you've got two weeks if you've got a month if you've got two months it's an incredible experience however you do it so right, yeah. yeah there's something important to keep in mind there is, sure. there is some financial privilege in that especially as americans to be able to talk about mm -hmm. you know be able to do this every year or whatever yeah. Yeah. where the europeans one of the reasons the french do and the, there's so many frenchmen uh, that do what you're describing. But again, it's really easy for them to just get on a train and go down to, to do a section from where they are, um, where for us, it's so much more expensive just to get across the pond. But yeah. Yeah. And I think this is an important message for uh, probably a lot of us have a pretty big American or North American contingency mm -hmm. on our, on our channels. Mm -hmm. And like that, I remember, you know, seeing people ask the question a lot of what if I only have this chunk of time, is it even worth mm -hmm. it? And so I sat down and I spent like a couple hours coming up with different two week itineraries that build mm -hmm. in travel time. Yeah. Because like you guys are saying is it's almost, there is the disadvantage in the sense that we have to come from far. We also arrive super jet lagged um, and we have to figure in, it's not like the Caminos in general start from Madrid or Barcelona. There are paths, but usually you have to, factor in transit time. And so I think um, kind of coming up with what your what your goals are, what what kind of scenery are you looking for? What kind of social interaction? Do you think you'll go back? Is this your in is this your one time you think you may do it? And but that shouldn't stop anyone from taking the chance. And I, I would bet that probably most people that say I'll do it this is my one time, I'll do it for a week or two they are figuring out anyway after i mean once your blisters heal or and your and your your feet are better they're figuring out any way to get back so yeah. but yeah don't be discouraged if you have right less than the month or two months or whatever amount of time you want to do the full thing because there are lots of options we hope you enjoyed that conversation and please stay tuned for more again jeremiah is posting over at camino guide i'm here at needing walks kate is at wanderlusting lawyer and we've got a lot more great content to come soon Blaine Camino.